Hello everyone, I'm Happy Pinecone, and welcome to another Draw Me video where I talk about stuff as a speed paint place. Today's illustration is going to be the recently popular hashtag 6 fanart challenge, where I draw 6 characters. It's been a while since I drew fanart, as I usually express my love for our fandom through writing fanfiction. So this is an excellent opportunity to express my favorite fandoms visually. Before I begin, I want to give special thanks to LL underscore Rosie from Instagram for suggesting to draw Princess Jasmine from Aladdin. Your input means a lot. So, without further ado, take a seat and draw with me. I choose the other five based on what came to mind, and what came to mind was anime. The characters are Kyoka's Oriki Hotoro and Chitanda Eru, Toilet Bound Hanako Kun's Yasho Nene and Hanako Kun, and Inazuma Eleven's Fubuki Shiro. I think most of you probably know Jasmine and the story of Aladdin as told by Disney, so I decided to use this time talking about the other three shows, which I highly recommend because they cover a variety of interests and gives a good story. Let's start with Hyoka. Hyoka is a mystery slice of life story about Potoro Oroki, a first year whose motto is, if I don't have to do something, I won't, but if I have to, I'll do it quickly. His life turned upside down after he couldn't refuse his older sister's request to join the classic literature club. While uninterested in being actively involved in his high school life, Hodro possessed excellent deduction skills and as a result, gotten himself involved in solving mysteries with his friends and fellow club members. While the mysteries themselves aren't as complicated as a crime mystery, they are like riddles and puzzles that are interesting enough to attract the person's curiosity. As Hotro uses his deduction to find the truth, the audience could join in to come up with their own mysteries based on the given clues. Meanwhile, they can either be proud of themselves for solving the mystery or be amazed by Hotro's thought process. Either way, the mystery brings anticipation. What I like about Hyoga are the characters and their relationships. The four members of the classic lit club possess different personalities that complement each other as their interactions provide depth and interest. Hotro and Chitanda's chemistry, for instance, is well done as a boy with a curious deduction and a girl with an almost insatiable curiosity. It's because of Chitanda's curiosity that made Hotro ended up going against his motto so many times throughout the series to solve mysteries. It was her that made him curious about the rose-colored world that he's trying to avoid throughout high school. Hyoka's opening and ending songs are really nice as well. My favorites in particular are Mikase Stride and Kimini Matsuwara Mystery. Moving on, we have Toilet Bound Hanukkah-kun. This is another school anime, except it leans towards the supernatural. It's about a girl named Yashiro Nene who summoned an apparition named Hanako at the girl's bathroom to wish for her crush to accept her feelings. However, due to some circumstances, she ends up cursing the process and to alleviate its effects, she must become Hanako's assistant. From then on, she becomes more involved with the supernatural activities happening at school. Like the near shore and far shore, the anime has two sides to it. On one hand, it's lighthearted and humorous, with charming characters as Yasho witness several spirits and befriends Hanako. On the other hand, it can become very touching and heartbreaking, as it quietly implies an underlying theme in the story. The series ended recently, and I hope that they will continue with a second season. I heard that there's more going on in the manga with more feels, comedy, and drama. Their opening and ending songs are amazing and really represent the show's two sides. For instance, their opening number 7 is upbeat and epic, and their ending Tiny Light is a gentle and sweet melody. I enjoyed watching Yashu and Hanako's relationship. The former's naivete and innocence complements the latter's mischievous and secretive nature very well. While I personally ship them, there's a high chance that it will never sail, which makes their relationship even more interesting as the two are able to bond literally and figuratively, despite their different circumstances. Finally, I want to talk about Inazuma Eleven. Now, Inazuma Eleven has been a childhood favorite of mine. Inazuma Eleven is a soccer anime that begins with Endo Mamoru and his team aiming to be number one in Japan's Junior Soccer Frontier Tournament. While the show feels more childish and shown in vibes compared to the others, it is still charming with lessons about passion and friendship and, of course, soccer. I don't play the sport myself, but Inazuma Eleven is able to make it interesting through interaction, strategy, and giving the characters soccer-related superpowers. I watched its English dub back when anime was still in Cartoon Network, so it took me several years before I got to see the sub, which I like also, because both the dub and the sub sounded really nice. Except Go, their dub wasn't really good. 
Inazuma 11 has a lot of installments or new stories to tell, and its latest are Eri no Tenbin and Oryo no Koken. And while I liked their concepts, I wasn't really fond with their execution. Other than that, the installments before those are really good. I'm personally not into their opening songs, and while I'm okay with their ending songs, I don't have a particular favorite. Speaking of which, I, what I find interesting is that the opening songs seem to revolve around the show's central themes such as determination, friendship, and soccer. While the ending songs, on the other hand, are mostly youth-related and mostly middle school romance, which is something that Inazuma 11 actually lacked, which I found interesting. Though romantic fanfiction is frequent, I drew my favorite character for Bukishiro for this challenge. The show was divided into arcs and he appeared in the second one when Japan got attacked by aliens. Long story. I like his character, he's gentle, a nice guy, but also really reserved as he keeps his problems to himself. He's one of the first characters who appeared in the show to play two positions, forward and defender. He also had dissociative identity disorder, where his personality changes into someone more aggressive whenever he plays forward. He's one of the reasons why I was so hooked in Zuma 11 in the first place, since back then I was really fascinated by his split personality. I once made a fan theory about how his character arc strongly connects with the alien conflict in the second season. When I have time, I hope I can share it with you guys one day through a video. Once again, I highly recommend those three anime series because they're really good. I hope you enjoyed this video and illustration. Overall, I enjoyed doing the 6 final art challenge and talking to you guys about the anime I like. I'm thinking of making another 6 final art challenge drawing because there are so many characters that I want to draw. If you have any thoughts, questions, suggestions, and anime recommendations that you want to share, send them through the comment section below. And while you're at it, like this video and subscribe if you want to keep updated with my latest videos. That is all for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.